Hello and welcome to a Tuesday Business News Report. It's now time to bring your feature on the show today. We are focusing on the agricultural sector. Now, President Mohamed Buhari just a few days ago signed the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria Amendment Bill 2021 into law. Now, the president also approved the establishment of two educational institutions. They are the Federal College of Agriculture and the Federal College of Education, Brinkudu in Jigawa State. The president's actions are aimed at furthering the economic diversification agenda of his administration in which agricultural sector is expected to play the lead role. Now, with the amendment, the council is also expected to play a crucial part in coordinating research efforts in the agricultural sector towards achieving food sufficiency and security in the nation. And joining me now live in our Lagos to discuss this and much more, I have African farmer Mogaji, an agribusiness coach. Good to have you on The Breakfast Show this morning. Good morning. Now, the role of research is quite integral in any value chain, in any sector of the economy. But now in agriculture, we have the narrative where there is the belief that research does not necessarily yield as much because we have some of these reports just hanging on shelves or not necessarily replicated at larger scales beyond the pilot scheme mm. how critical first and foremost would you say research is and the signing of this bill into law empower the agri sector through research well um research is the platform to birth innovation mm. it's based on trial and error find out what works it helps you to plan for the future. Mm. Um, so you have varieties, you know, you can have 30 varieties um, created for various scenarios. And when those scenarios show up, you begin to update it. So um, research, the success of agribusiness starts with research. Imputes is research. Name it is research. Even logistics, how to transport, there's research. research. Every value chain requires specialized research, which is fundamentally lacking in the Nigeria uh, agro eco space. So with this, um, with the law, it helps. But with the right people manning the office, that is when uh, we can have success. But do you understand the sentiment where people believe that the agri-research institutes we have on ground are not necessarily performing as much because we don't see as much of volume or impact from such institutes in terms of the fact that if you have data or information that's helped to fine-tune the sector and it's not being utilized properly on a larger scale then it's not relevant do you understand the sentiment yeah, of the population uh, about in that 12 regard? or 15 years ago i went to ghana for a week just exploring their research institutions and i saw a seed that reduces maturity of livestock you know that one that you breed for meat and um, so i went through the field i saw all the things approved in the u.s again i brought it back and i went to my colleague yeah. uh contemporary in school to say oh i brought this and when i told him he said come he took me to the seed bank in more plantation in ibado and there you have finished projects what i went to get in ghana was a sitting on the shelf in the research institutes yeah. our research institutes mm. are they have top-notch research it's that we're not funding that aspect of commercialization. We're not funding that aspect of them pushing out their mm. discoveries. We're funding just the field. And after the field, they need approval. Um, I know during uh, President Thomas Sojo, he did ask that um, some of the research institutes you know, she commercialized these things. When he went around and he discovered that there was so much, mm. we need to fund that commercialization. Until we fund that commercialization, I tell you, almost everything we need is in the research. Because mm. our professors, our researchers are the ones they take abroad also. You know, like I, I'm aware, somebody just took um, earlier in the year, uh, what you call the Obomosho Mango, mm. took it to Israel. The Israelis, the Israelis wanted it for a research. So very soon they'll be giving us uh, cherry mango and coke back. So, but it, they are Nigerian researchers working with them. You know, so bottom line is that we have all we need. We just need to dust those things and commercialize. This also, also uh, tilts into the narrative we have of our oil palm base as well. All it just had to take was research, go look abroad and see how much we can also have it become grown on a plantation basis. And now Nigeria is almost losing its ground as uh, the source of oil palm in terms of high production volume. But now going back to what's 
the expectation of government now? To what extent do you expect investment to drive research and also replicate such findings and tests from livestock to seed variety, crop production, and much more? How do you want to see the narrative tilt, especially as we're looking at food production hubs now shifting? We are moving away from our original food baskets due mm. to issues around insecurity and much more transportation, logistics here and there. How do we now have seedlings, live cro uh, livestock that are much more resistant that can weather the storm and go along with the new changes from climate change to the soil texture here and all of those that we have as we're looking at new places to create as hubs? So the way it works is that if the private sector companies that um, fund the research. Either they have an, a robust R&D or they partner with the research institutes to ensure that we have those things. So it's not government. Some funding will come from government to initiate it, but it's the private sector. The way it should work now is government should set up, um, I don't want to say a, a committee, we've abused that in the mm -hmm. country, but should set up either a department that would lobby the private sector. I use the word lobby. Lobby them to say, okay, you're bringing in wheat. You're bringing in this. Can you fund this research? It's 10 years. It's not profit-oriented. Mm. You know, it can be 10, it can be 20 years, but the result is what, you know, generates profit. So can you fund this? Because our policies will not support you importing. Mm. And so they would budget for it, and they have to make sure that they give them some time and they will fund it. That was what was working when our cocoa, granite, when all those things mm. were, were one to five globally, it was because the private sector companies were working with government funding research and doing quite a lot of evaluation. So we mm. must lobby the private sector and get them to know that this policy will not change, come what may. Mm. If we don't give them that guarantee, they would still look out because it's copy, and paste. and paste. Now, let's also look at some of the cash crops that we have as at now, and then looking at the conversation around restriction of Forex for uh, the importation of wheat and much more. This is to some people using the Yoruba uh, explanation, it's just like a Majawiri approach, mm. uh, fire brigade approach. We're not necessarily putting uh, structures in place or measures in place to ensure that we have much more robust uh, base of production. With wheat now, what sort of narrative do you think would play out as we're going to see it now not necessarily have forex allocation? We are forced to now increase our production level. How do you think research would tweak that volume? You see, I've always spoken about comparative advantage. Mm. Do we have comparative advantage to grow wheat as against Russia, Canada, the United States? We don't have... The government says it makes no sense important. No, it's not for government to say it makes no sense important. Who is using it? Who is importing? It's the private sector. What we need to do is to focus on our exports to be able to get foreign currency. Government should focus on exports, creating the atmosphere in Nigeria that we can grow to a point that we can take excess out. They have no business with that. It's not their business. So they should do what is in their control, get their parastatals to function. When the parastatals function, then we can produce more than enough and export. The more we export, the more we get forex. Mm. If we don't export, there's no forex. If they want to import, it's because we're not pushing out more and there's high demand on what we have. So the conversation has to tilt away from putting all of these restrictions and rather improving on our local production base to satisfy the local demand and then now start thinking of standardization and improvement and value addition for exports. Yes. So why is it now difficult for government to understand that? Because some of the people in government make money from this dysfunctional um, uh, organizations. So mm. because they make money from it, just on Saturday, around barracks, um, a, um, a trailer, you know, I think like two or three of them, bringing in seeds from Mexico. A parastata of government imported wheat seeds from Mexico. Mm. Now, so if a parastata imports seed, because I took the pictures from Mexico, it should be Ministry of Agriculture that should be approving individual, but another parastata that is not Ministry of Agriculture is importing 
wheat seed. What does that tell you? It means that people are making money. They have to keep the system dysfunctional for them to keep making money. You see, I would want an appeal to the federal government to allow the current Minister of Agriculture do his job by protecting that ministry, cutting off all other ministries that have tried to take up that role. If not, we will be back again. As I speak to you now, um, take for instance, corn is part of uh, the, the commodities that is not receiving, that has restriction mm. on forex access. The corn that is about to be harvested is already being priced in places like Shaki, say in Southwest, mm. for about a hundred naira. Ideally, if it gets to December, it should be like 20, 30 naira. But it has not dried up. Is currently being priced at and deposited naira. at 100 naira. So it tells you that we need to drive local production more. Mm. If we don't drive local production, there will still be need. The prices will go higher. So mm. government needs to ensure that the Ministry of Agriculture is well-funded and allowed to do its function. And talking about also establishing our local base now, we also need to look at the likes of wheat and, like you've mentioned, maize and other commodities that are traded on the international market. We need this revenue to come in from those areas. How do you now see things playing out in the short to medium and then long term? The President Buhari administration is wrapping up, barely two years to go. Mm. The Minister of Agriculture, the Commissioners of Agriculture, what sort of narrative or change or shift or engagement do you expect now? Now, they need to speak with a regional voice, working with the Central, with the Ministry of Agriculture, Federal Ministry of Agriculture, to say, hey, um, Southwest, um, North Central, North We're putting in focus, we have security challenges. So looking at the new food hubs. Yes, yeah, so looking at the new food hubs, we still have to operate regionally. We still have to say, okay, what do you have comparative advantage on? And so give us two and set a target. The challenge we're having currently in the country across all the states is that there's no target. Cross River is doing better. Because if you say we're going to produce um, 1 million metric tons of rice in the next two years, and you, you put the political will behind it, and every state is bringing out something with a goal, all the states, and including Federal uh, Ministry of Agriculture, are playing football on a pitch without a goal post. There's no target. The research institutes don't have a target. Nobody has a target. The states, everybody is just talking. Mm. No target. So until we get a target of two, not three, not four, not five, you know, we, we, we are in for another challenge for uh, 2022. Mm. But the opportunities are huge. The mm. challenges this year is phenomenal in the ag sector. But guess what? If we get the right um, people, and mm. I always say, square pegs in square holes, mm. and the political backing, we they go, we'll get there. Now, talking about research and value addition, this is a link that Nigeria has not necessarily placed its best foot uh, forward now. You look at the likes of cash crops we earlier made mention of, from cocoa to other trader uh, commodities on the international market, maize and a whole lot more. We're not seeing value addition. Why do we have this fixation or this deficiency of just producing raw materials? Research has shown that we could make a whole lot out of just one uh, product. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so, so because it's a, a little capital intensive and it takes some time. So you don't find people who want to invest for a, a period because processing is a game of small, 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 small numbers. So you don't, have, you don't find people, power is a major challenge. At the same time, power is not a challenge. It's not every area in India that has power. Mm. And yet they are all processing small cottage. So the, the missing link in our processing is that we are always looking at big as against focusing on cottage. Mm. So we don't invest in what we have control on. We invest on what we don't have control on. So when we bring the big equipments to process, we have to bring in expatriates to take, sort it out. Mm. But when we use small and medium, we will have the uh, Chinedu by the roadside, Kaboru by the roadside, you know, Musa, who can fix all those things. So it is our policy around processing that we need to improve on and get BOI to please, mm. you know, do more. They're doing, you know, fairly good, but they can do more 
in that value chain because they have the mandate. Without them and without interventions timely implemented through BOI, okay. it will have a long way to go. Thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning. The African Farmer, Morgan G.